Let's write a program that prompts the user for the names and houses of three students. Now, to store those names and houses, we could use what? Six variables, three strings for the names, and another three strings for the houses. But we already know that we can clean up that code by using arrays instead. For instance, an array of size three for the three names, and another array of size three for the houses. But it turns out we can clean this up further still and actually keep those names and houses together so that a student's name and his or her house are somehow encapsulated, so to speak, into the same variable. To do this, though, we need to declare our own data type, our own type in C, that the authors of C didn't necessarily think of years ago. To do this, we can use the keyword typedef along with the other keyword struct. Let's take a look. Inside of structs.h, I've already gotten started by including the CS50 library. I'm next going to type typedef struct and then a curly brace. Inside of this struct, I'm going to specify that a student shall have a string called name and another string called house. I'm going to then close my curly braces and specify that the name of this new data type shall be student. In other words, via this syntax, have I declared a new data type of my own that didn't exist a moment ago. And inside of this data type are two data fields or data members, one called name, one called house, both of which are of type string. Let's now use this type in an actual program. In structs0.c, I've similarly gotten myself started already with some boilerplate code. And I'm now going to use this data type student as follows. I'm first going to declare an array of type student. I'll call the array students, plural, and I'll specify that its size will be 3, which notice is the value of the constant students, in all capitals, that I've declared up here earlier in the file. Let's now iterate over those three students and prompt the user for their names and houses. For int i get 0, i is less than that constant, i++. Plus plus. And now inside of the body of this for loop, I'm going to print out something like student's name. I'm then going to actually get that student's name by specifying student's bracket i. In other words, I want the ith student in the array called students. But now I want to get at that ith student's name. And to do this, I'm going to use the dot operator in order to get at a specific field inside of this struct. So I specify students bracket i dot name gets the return value of get string. Meanwhile, I'm going to print out something similar saying students house. And now I'm going to specify that the ith students house field shall get the return value of another call to get string. Now let's do something with these three students names and houses, something simple like printing each out in a sentence. For int i get 0 again i is less than students, i++, plus plus. printf, percent %s is in, percent %s, period backslash n. And now let me plug in the values of those two fields. Students, bracket i, dot name, comma, students, bracket i, dot house, close paren, semicolon. And now I need to do one more thing. At the bottom of this file, I need to free the memory that was allocated behind the scenes by get string, which of course causes malloc in order to allocate memory for the strings the user types. But this too is simple. For int i get 0, i is less than students, i plus plus. And inside the body of this for loop, I'm simply going to provide free students bracket i dot name and free students bracket i dot house. Now, we've clearly used three for loops in this program, when really I could have just used one. But this is just for demonstration's sake, so that we can specify in three distinct steps what exactly we're doing. We're first getting a name and a house for each of the students. We're then printing out the name and the house for each of the three students. And then we're going to free the memory used by each of the students. But surely, we could have combined this into one bigger for loop. Let's now save, compile, and run this program. Make structs 0 dot slash struct zero, student's name, let's provide David, he'll live in Mather House. Student's name, let's say Lauren, she'll live in Leverett House. Student's name, Rob, he'll live in Kirkland House. And indeed, David is in Mather, Lauren is in Leverett, and Rob is in Kirkland.